Hello, this is the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim. First episode of 2019, and Happy New Year, Miss Vegas. How are you doing today? Oh my gosh, Happy New Year, Jim, and Happy New Year to everyone. I have been recovering from a uh, cold and uh, still got still got it lingering and coughing, but you know what? First day back um, in terms of able to speak without coughing as much, so... I'm happy to be back, and it's definitely been a happy 2019 so far. So I'm so glad to be here and with you. And, of course, our viewers, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. We love that you guys are here, and thank you. Yeah, and I want to also mention, don't forget not to subscribe. I mean, to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell button so you can get our updates. Back to you. All right. So I do want to talk about today um a couple things so it's you know it's our first video so i want to talk about what's been happening with the spy and then i'm going to talk about obviously i'll give you guys the list of the stocks that we're going to go through so first let's just quickly talk about the spy and uh just an article that was uh, uh printed out in uh investopedia uh written by mark kolakowski and he was just mentioning that you know the stocks have sunk below their all-time highs Various major indexes across the globe endured corrections of at least 10% um, or bear market declines of 20% or more. And obviously the uh, SPY <clears throat> um, came within a hair of a 20% bear market drop in the late December and closed on January 3rd at 16.8% below the all-time record peak set from September. So what lies ahead in 2019? Well... I'm just going to share a couple comments from uh, some experts out there in the market. So Byron Wean of Blackstone Group said he's optimistic. And Jeremy Siegel of the Wharton School expects, I quote, quite a good year. And both of them envisioning gains of up to 15% for the S&P 500 in 2019. Um, the only one that was a little bit like, you know, cautious was uh, Jack Bogle, the founder of the Vanguard Group. He was just, you know, take a little caution. But the consensus view of the market strategist on Wall Street is that the index will close 2019 at a new record high of 3,000, up by 19.7% from the 2018 close. And this was also from a survey that was done by CNBC. So can the SPY rebound? Well, you know what? I think, like we said, we've heard a lot of different comments, but uh, I do want to turn it over to Jim to kind of talk about his thoughts on the spy and what he sees and also what he was saying over the last uh, month, actually. And when I say month, I'm talking about during the month of December, if you were in the chat room uh, listening and uh, to Jim, uh, I got to tell you, he was saying a lot of things, but I'm going to let him talk and tell everyone what he was saying because Jim was right yep i was kind of preparing the room to let them know that this was an unusual sell-off for the month of december is really one of the biggest sell-offs we had in history of wall street so that it definitely opened up my eyes thinking that maybe it was overdone and so last week at the end of the year i told the room i said or the last couple of weeks i said during this sell-off you want to gather up some good stocks that you've played in the past because this is an un unnecessary dip for the market. Well, the, I would hit a bingo right on the spot. I called that 233.76 bottom that day. Now I had it at 230, about 234. And that big dip for the last couple of, well, the last two weeks was just, like I said, unnecessary. And I also said that where SPY is going to go back and hit support level back at resistance at 255.13. And maybe go on up and start hitting that 260 again. Well, for the last one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days, we bounced from that 233.76 all the way up to 252.39. So everybody that shorted the spy back then, which was a good idea, realized if they got in on that call, they could have got up on the bounce and made some good money on the calls, which the room was doing. So I'm. The red part up here on the chart was the territory that we played all last year, how we had that double dip and then it bounced up to the new highs of 293. And then we had the drastic channel here and then it sewed off the last eight days. 
So definitely, I think we're in a bullish trend. I called the bottom that last, well, last year. <laughs> this is 2019. <laughs> that's right. So I think that's about all I want to say about the, the SPY. I've got, I want to hit that 255.13 level. And once we hit that, we got another channel up to 259.42 with a pivot point right there at 257.46. Not saying it can pull back. And if it does pull back, it should pull back to the support area of 247.05. So that's where I've got got the support right now. And you know how the market overreacts. You never can control the market. But my crystal ball did come out and predict that. And the next one, Vegas wants to talk about a Chinese company. Uh, yes. And just before I go ahead, you know, when Jim talks about the spy charts and he is he is giving you guys support and resistance. I mean, that's very helpful, especially for those of you that like to trade spy option calls or spy puts. So you should be making notes of his commentary on his support and resistance, because uh, based on how the market reacts and responds, that will help you determine what kind of option call or put you might consider. So there is good money to be made on those during the day um, if you like trading options. So um, that's good tip there, Jim. Thank yep. you. Okay, so I do want to mention uh, a new IPO giant that's definitely coming in in 2019 and one that you guys should keep your eyes on. And of course, when it comes out, I will definitely be all over it and talking to you guys about it. i um, not sure if I'm going to buy it because I don't really know what the price will be. Um, so it just really does depend, but uh, I do want to mention, so few two holdings is a Hong Kong based online brokerage company and 10 cent holdings. You guys know 10 cent. Um, he is backing this Chinese internet, um, this, uh, you know, t t sorry, 10 cents, the Chinese internet giant, but he is backing, um, Futu holdings and, uh, Futu holdings is very involved in the financial services industry. And um, it is expected to be one of the first big Asian IPOs of 2019. Now, a couple weeks ago in 2018, in December, uh, they did file for the IPO. And uh, they are looking to raise $300 million. And they will be listed on the NASDAQ exchange under the ticker FHL for Futu Holdings Limited. So that makes sense for the ticker. And uh, the underwriting is being done by UBS, Goldman Sachs, and Credit Suisse. And obviously, they're going to use the capital to cover um, increased regulatory capital requirements in Hong Kong. And obviously, um, for general corporate purposes, for research and development to fund the business. Um, the company has actually done a lot of growth. Uh, they actually have 561 employees, and this was according to uh, the prospectus that was filed, but this is according to their staff numbers at the end of September. And um, just to mention, the CEO um, of Futu's founder, he was actually, this is how he's connected to Tencent, he was the 18th founding employee of Tencent, and um, the CTO um, was also a senior technology expert at Tencent. So, you know, this, you know, they're all know each other and they're all connected. So that is a really interesting uh, relationship there. Uh, so this company generates revenue basically in the form of commissions. Obviously, you guys know we all trade. And what happens when we make a trade, a buy and a sell, we pay commission. So this company is an online brokerage. They make their money from commission charges. Uh, obviously, they make money from their margin financing and security lending services. And, uh, you know, they obviously have a mass affluent class in China and strong demand for wealth management services. So um, definitely one to keep on watch. I think this will be an exciting one. I hope it's not going to be uh, disappointing like some of these other ones we've seen that have taken a little bit of a hit. Uh, because of the tariffs and all that. But, uh, you know, I don't think, I don't really know how this is going to respond to the market. I guess remains to be seen. So keep FHL on your watch. And when I get more news on when it will be listed, um, I will definitely share that here. So please subscribe and follow for that info. Okay. So I am now going to tell you guys the stocks that we're going to discuss today. So get your pen ready and write these down.
So STAF, S-T-A-F, we're going to talk about M-R-I-N-I-N-S-G, S-M-T-X, A-K-T-X, and I have a bonus. But you know what? I'm not going to mention it because you got to listen to the video to get it. Okay, Jim. So let's start with staff. Now, we haven't traded that one in a while. And I uh, have to say, staff is looking pretty, pretty good. And I have to say that I am liking it a lot. Looks extremely bullish. I like the fact that it's on a continuous, uh, the price has gone up. Um, every trading day and I think it's looking ready for a continuation and I like the fact that it's still below the two dollars and so I'm going to turn it over to Jim and he can talk about the staff chart so Jim let's hear what you think about staffing solutions well staffing solutions it looks to me like it has a very beautiful little chart we had a year low of down here at 114 last year, back in uh, 62618. We had that year low going on, and we pulled back here in this last little sell-off right down to that 129 area. So I'm looking at the year's chart right here. I'm seeing, you know, a pretty bouncy little chart. Likes to go up and down. So we're going to pull up the 20-day. Here we got down here at this 130 level here. We almost hit it. We did hit it back here 20 days ago. And it bounced all the way up to this resistance level of around 186 right in here. We almost hit 190. We had a year a 20 day high of 220. So we've got a golden cross going on on this 20 day chart right now where the 50 is crossing over the 100 as it did over here with the 200 SMA. So we did have a little pullback to support level here at 170. And I'm going to pull up a 10-day chart just to see if I see anything different. Yep, I'm pretty solid with this 170 support level. And if it goes back down a little bit, you might be able to see it go pull back to about 163. But when Miss Vegas says she's bullish on something, she's more or less right. So we're going to put this right here at 163. It's going to be a little another little soap pullback support. I think we've had a good, good five-day, good week run here from 141 all the way up to 189. And then it kind of consolidated Friday. And then we had that little last little candle here that pulled back to the support and bounced back up to that 177. So any kind of pullback on this is going to be healthy. I do not want to see it go. I do not repeat. want to see it go below 163. So that's going to be my solid support level for right now. 163 on staff. And I'm going to pull this one chair, one year chart up again just to have a final say about it. See, we hit this high of 565. It had some real good news that day. And then it, ever since then, it's kind of bounced up to resistance level of 337 and pulled on back down. So we hit a bottom here at 130. And the last couple of weeks, we've had last two or three weeks, it's hovered in this channel. So what we got to do is we got to break this 191, this 190 area to move on up to that next resistance. And that'll be right around 227. Then it can go higher from there and maybe up to about 240. So keep a good eye on staff. Any kind of pullback will be healthy. And I'm looking at a 163 support. <laughs> Vegas? Okay. And, uh, you know, just to mention, you know, staff, obviously, they're into staffing. Uh, they're in the staffing business and uh, have offices in the U.S. and the U.K. And um, they're, they focus on, you know, commercial staffing, accounting and, you know, admin and engineering. You know, they had a bit of a rocky road because at one time, you know, they were going to get delisted because they weren't <clears throat> meeting compliance. And then, you know what, back in November, they filed an 8K and, uh, you know, there was a material change in the company. Uh, and they talked about the action that they were taking to regain compliance. And they were able to, uh, was a conversion of $13 million term loan that was held by Jackson Investment Group into a Series E preferred stock. Um, so the CEO, obviously, Brendan Flood, you know, he is definitely 
uh, committed to making sure that their NASDAQ compliance is a key priority. Um, he is focused on building a profitable $500 million uh, revenue and driving the value of the stock back to the shareholders. Um, he was extremely grateful uh, to the Jackson Investment Group for their partnership and obviously their confidence in uh, staff. So let's try to see what happens now with staff. Uh, like the fact that it's been staying over the dollar. <laughs> so that's good. Um, so let's see if we can uh, continue like what Jim said. And uh, definitely he gave you the does not want to see it go below. What was the number there, Jim? 160? 163. Three? Okay. So that would be like my stop loss, really. Um, or 162 would be my stop loss. So definitely looking to take this as a swing trade. Really don't care about the scanner alerting me. I'm liking to trade it based on what I see on the chart. And we'll look for an entry tomorrow. Not in a rush to get into the stock. We'll wait for the opportunity. Um, unless, of course, it starts popping first thing in the morning. But again, no chasing stocks. Okay? Yeah, I, I, pulled, up, right. I pulled up a YouTube video on it, on Staffing 360 Solutions. Yeah. So it kind of mind? describes the company and what they do. And so if you all got YouTube, you go ahead pull up staffing 360 solutions in company and you can watch this video i'm watching right now great okay and the next one we're going to talk about is one that was a good runner for us and pulled back and that's m-r-i-n right and so marin software so this is the company you knew um that they you know they're going to do like a revenue share with google and uh you know at that time you know the stock had a nice little run and uh, now it's pulled back. But you know what? I was looking at the weekly chart and I kind of uh, was attracted to it again. So I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart because, um, you know, kind of looking at this from a swing trade perspective um, might take a little time. But I think I'm looking to see the, the stock expand again and, and go higher. So I'm going to turn it over to you, Jim, to talk about that. Yeah, I'm glad you brought this one up. I'm going to go ahead and pull this one year chart up. This had a year high up here right around, oh, the $10 level, 10 something. I think I'm seeing about a 10, 8, 11 bucks. And then last month, it ran all the way up to $12 and it's pulled back ever since. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight days. So we've had a pullback to support level here, which is right around 525. Now I've got a low support and it's held there in the last four days at that 525 area. But it, just in case it has another little bitty knife, we can look at 491 for a very solid uh, support running here on the 200 SMA at 486. That 491 is very important for it to hold. But right now, as I see, this 525 has been a solid support. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day chart. And you see this run that we were talking about. Vegas and I called this in the room off that Google News revenue sharing and it bounced all the way up to $12 and hit that $12 exactly it didn't go a penny above and then it's pulled back so we've consolidated for the last four days here at 525 so we're gonna have a little channel here I'm thinking around a dollar 525 to 625 624 maybe just a little bit higher but if it can create that bounce back up and then maybe have a breakout after that but right now we're looking at a channel that we're gonna be playing and this is really a, a pretty profitable channel if you can get in at 525 and run it all the way up to about 06, 624. So that's going to be basically what I'm going to be scoring on, that 624 area. And then if we can get above it, we can carry on. But that's going to be a solid resistance. And this is MRIN. I do like this company, and I do like the fact that they're, they're involved with Google now. And that was what made this stock run before. We've had the pullback, which they always do. What goes up comes right back down. So when you uh -huh. think you hit a resistance, take that profit. Right. Don't walk and away. And you know what? Be sorry. I've got to say, I just want to mention, you know, like about taking profit, taking profit. And here's a prime example. I mean, the stock ran almost to, I think you mentioned $11, right? Yeah, we called it at and 220 then, And, you know, people that had this fantasy that, oh, I'm going to hold on as an investment because you know they're connected with google and you know they would have held and held and held now they're back down again you know so 
when it's at the top, take the money, like take the money and run. And then you know what, you wait for pullback and then you can get in again. So here's your opportunity um, as Jim outlined, but you know, must take profits. Now, as everybody knows, I'm a coffee drinker. So I'm going to tap on my trash can three times. That means I'm emptying my grounds and I'm going <laughs> to fill it. Okay. And the next one we're going to talk about, Vegas, is well, I, I-N-S-G. <laughs> yes. So in Seagull Corp, I will say this company, I like it. And uh, I want to just mention that if you were in the chat, um, I mentioned earlier this week that this was a great swing trade idea. Um, alerted the stock, actually. And you know what? Maybe there's people out there that alerted it sooner. It doesn't matter. I alerted this as a swing trade. That's kind of when I saw it at $4.55. And actually, my target was 5 and then five twenty-five. And boy, oh boy, uh, this has had a nice run. And people were just happy because it was just stress-free, a beautiful chart, a beautiful setup. So in Sego Corp, is uh, a company that's involved in mobile applications and um, they're into the, uh, you know, sales as a service solution and they're into the IOT, which is the Internet of Things and also mobile solutions. And um, they're also into making sure that their applications have zero downtime, which is amazing. And they're very involved in um, asset tracking and fleet management uh, to make sure that obviously companies that let's say use it, I don't know, let's just say a courier company might use their product. Um, they can always track, you know, where are their trucks on the road, um, et cetera. So they're very involved into various uh, 5G technology. And the company is headquartered in San Diego, California. Now, I will mention that they will be coming to New York at the 21st annual Needham Growth Conference, and that will be on January 16th. So it's not this week, but it's the week after. And they're going to, it's basically an investors conference, and um, they're going to meet with investors uh, throughout the day. And that will be held at the Lottie Hotel in New York. And Dan Monder, their CEO, is obviously going to be there. And he's the one that's going to be doing the presentations. And uh, I guess um, the this is the invitation-only event. And so, obviously, I won't be surprised that there'll be more interest in the stock uh, in the market uh, as a result of this presentation also going on. But the chart is what appealed to me the most. And that's all I care about. Um, and, uh, Jim, you can talk about this now because, uh, I think it's one of our favorites for the week. Yeah. What's, which made me a better trader was, was teaming up with Vegas. She's very good at fundamentals and she's also very good at, at chart reading. And I think, you know, without her, I'd probably still be mind numbed and playing just with, with the technical part of it. But hanging with her has, has taught me the inside of the fundamentals and, and well, thank I've, you, Jim. Yeah. I've learned actually a lot more about charting and pullbacks, so thank you so much. Oh, and I want to mention, too, before you talk about the chart, 52-week closing high. Yep. So I love that, too. So this, to me, extremely bullish, but I'm going to let the chartists talk about that because no one knows charts like Jim. No one. So if you find someone better, you let me know because I still have yet to find someone better than Jim. Well, I'm, I'm noticing people in our room are starting to learn real fast. So Which is great. got some competition. Yep. <laughs> but this is INSG, and I learn from everybody, even if you're a rookie or if, you, if you've been at it for years, because even some people that's been at it for years are, are egomaniacs, and they always have flaws too, and I'm one of them. So here we are on the <laughs> three-year right. chart. And we had a three-year high. It had to break this 434, which it did Friday. And we had a big, huge surge on a Friday, surge in volume. So always when I see something like this, and we're at a 52-week yearly high and, and also a three-year high. So I'm going to pull this back down to a 20-day. And you see how Friday, how beautiful that was? I didn't catch this trade. I think if I would have saw the volume on this breakout, I would have probably got in it and played it. But we've had a good two-week run on it. It had a bottom here at 350, and we closed at five. 
So I'm going to try to draw what I think is going to be a pullback support on this thing. And I'm looking in the area of right around 482. And maybe a low support around 468. And then the final low low will be right around 458. With your first support here at 493. So this is like I said, it's a it's a breakout stock. It's at a 52 week high. It can go higher. It's good to watch the volume. And any kind of pullbacks I think would be a healthy one. And I'm going to concern it right around that 482 area. And I'm going to change this line to blue. So I know I'll be looking for it. And that's what I'm thinking with the low support down here at 434, but I don't think we'll see that for a while. So this is INSG, 52-week high dr driven up. We're at a two-week level of bounce. Maybe a pull pullback, a little pullback is granted. Let's see if it can hold that 482 area. No lower. Then that'd be okay. INSG. If it goes lower, and if it goes lower, so make sure you set your stops if you're in it. But I think we'll we'll definitely be have this on watch and it'll be playable into next week. Exactly. And you know, see the ones that were in the swing trade from the room, um, they've been making sure to, you know, preserve gains and if they get stopped, they get stopped. But we were in from four fifty five, so quite happy with uh how this has turned out and looking for more highs on the stock. So yep. thanks, Jim, on that. So Co next coffee. one. Coffee is ready. Okay. Pour me, make me an espresso, please. Yes, ma'am. Um, so next one is, uh, while well, Jim makes me an espresso, um, is called, the ticker is called SMTX, but the name of the company is called <laughs> SMTC. And uh, this company is actually headquartered in Toronto, Canada. So Canadian listeners... This is a Canadian company. Um, so this company was actually founded in 1985. They provide end-to-end um, -end electronics manufacturing, and also they provide testing services. They do a lot of um, product design, and they do a lot of engineering and supply chain management. They also have uh, facilities in Mexico and China. Nobody wants to hear those names right now. And uh, obviously the U.S., um, so it is publicly traded, obviously, under SMTX. And I, the reason I liked this one, too, was, and I'm not in it, um, is because of the fact that it has a new 52-week high. And also, um, the fact is, I we looked at the three-year chart, and it's also made a new three-year high. So that is really, really, really important. Um, definitely it's on a beautiful, strong uptrend and, uh, looks extremely bullish for a continuation. I actually don't even recall even hearing this on a scanner. This is why, again, I, you can't just rely on scanners. Got to use your, your brain. Um, and, uh, turn it over to Jim to talk about the beautiful, beautiful chart and what he anticipates, um, from what he could see on this particular stock, SMTX. Well, they were talking about um, how the revenues increased. 56, 53 million compared to 34 million in the third quarter of 2017. So I don't know how accurate that is. It looks to me like they might be a little behind, but they definitely bring in the revenue. And that's SMTC, which is SMTX as a ticker. And she is right. It did have a three year high. I'm going to pull that up. To three year and show you what we got going down we had to break that level of 403 and we went up to 492 closed friday kind of looks good these last three candles especially how the bases of each candle rose above the previous high which i make them my support areas so i'm bringing this now down to a 20 day look at that we had a nice breakout from this 355 level right here that double bottom 355 357 and it bounced all the way up in the last two weeks up to this five dollar area and even after hours it went up to five so that's quite impressive too so it it, it wants to still go up so i'm going to try to be logical here as spock would say maybe around a 487 would be a good little support area i'm going to draw that in blue so i can remember it 
that's what I like to do when I'm doing this. Kind of reminds me of where support could be at 487. So any kind of pullback would be healthy, and I always say that. You know, I'm not the one to rush in a stock, and I'll, I'll wait for the pullback, but some people will jump in right at resistance knowing this is a 52-week high. So I just got to see the action. Another pullback here would be right around 495, maybe. Just hit that previous hive that we had Friday. But after hours, it went up to $5. So this is SMTX. Add it to your 52-week high list. And we gave you two of them today. Uh, one was INSG, and the other one is SMTX. And we got another. Right, and I, Go ahead. Oh, wait. And I just want to mention SMTC. You know, back in November, they acquired a company called MC Assembly Holdings. I forgot to mention that. And when they acquired this company, uh, the purchase price at closing was $65 million. So uh, the good news with this company is that there's a lot of really good synergies. Their customer base won't overlap with the customer base of SMTC. So it's actually um, revenue on the books that should start showing up. So I think this company has a lot of potential growth-wise. And the fact that they bought this for $65 million, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't have that any money or, you know, um, how would you buy a company? So I like the stock. So what you know we'll see what happens like jim says but just wanted to mention that they did buy mc assembly back in november so the transaction probably um i believe closed or should have closed soon so uh let's see here i think they're going to close this uh they will have um implementing during a 2019 so looks like it's not closed just yet but it should very soon um and uh, keep that one on your watch, like uh, Jim talked about. Yeah, and it, it definitely bounced off that news back then. Made yeah. a nice little bounce on that. So, okay. And they also announced fifteen million dollars in orders, which made it, you know, with the Mexican operations, Mexico. Right. So that's that's good news, and just keeps hitting fifty-two week high. The quarter. Let me see here. The revenue. Exactly. Fifty-three and million. I mean, if you guys look at the, um, you know, if you look at the volume on the chart, okay, because I know a lot of people like to trade volume only, but you know, sometimes I really like to buy uncrowded trades, and you know, SMT um, X is one of those because the volume's not that huge, right? I mean, if you look at the volume uh, Friday, there's only two hundred and fifty-seven thousand shares traded. The day before, like 146,000. But you know what? From the day before, um, you know, it closed at 480. The next day, it closed at 492. So this is on an uptrend. I mean, even the day before that, closed at, you know, a couple days prior, like just before New Year's, closed at 408. That's almost a almost a dollar in like three, four trading days. Yeah. So and it know, had a buy rating and uncrowded like uncrowded like not a lot of buyers here yeah it had a buy rating to six dollars mm -hmm. by uh b riley so it, it's and that was back on december the 11th so yeah she's 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 looking good that's for sure any okay. kind of in low low support i mean if it really wants to have a knife on us i'm still bullish on it be four four six area but this has definitely got a buy rating on it, up to six bucks. And I don't pay much attention to analysts because I'm I like to figure it out on my own. But when I read something like that, it's just extra catalyst of encouragement. And that's SMTX, and then we're going to give you another one with an okay. X on it. Yeah. <laughs> a AKTX. AKTX. Okay, and this is called Akari Therapeutics. AKTX. And I like this one too. Again, I have to point out very, very uncrowded uh, stock. Very uncrowded, like totally, like if you look at the volume, pretty dry. Like it's not like a major volume here. Um, you know, so, but what I do like about the stock is that it is above the 50 day. Uh, it looks like it wants to continue. Um, but I will let Jim talk, but this company here, you know, uh, they're into developing uh, treatments for auto-inflammatory diseases, uh, also um, leukotriene, and uh, they have quite a few things also in the pipeline. 
this actual company. So keep it on watch. I'm looking for this to have a continuation. Um, so, you know, right now, if you notice, uh, it has been on a nice little little channel here for a little, for quite some time. I think we're going to have to, I'd like to see this, you know, Jim will talk about this, but I think the last time it had a high of about 192 was back in early December. So I think that's going to be a major uh, break breaking point would be like 192 and I think we'll see more highs but um, Jim you talk about this chart because it's looking good to me at this point but I'd like to hear your thoughts yeah well, I'm gonna pull up a three three year first thing I just want to identify a three year so you know this thing was up at $22 at one time wow. back in 2016 then when 2017 came in it's been kind of had a sell-off with a 156 low and we're right at 179 right now and that 156 low just came four days ago so we're looking at a bottom here on this stock and i'm going to pull up a one year you see the channel she was talking about from this low support area which i would consider being right around 172 but we did have a pullback three days ago four days ago to 156 so keep that 172 fresh in your mind for a buy entry. I also want to bring up a 20 day. Even on a one year, it was up at 428 and then just sold off tremendously in three months. Trade that low support. So I'm going to pull up a 20 day now. And I think the pullback, would, we're at a pivot point in this channel. I'm going to pull up this year and just show you what I mean by pivot point. See right around in here, I would consider a pivot point right around 190, and that's right around where the 200 SMA is. Just right in here. So anything above that 190 would be a pivot point, and we're definitely down here at support level. This can pull back to 172 to 165, and that'd be a strong buy for me if I was trading this stock. So I'm going to pull up a 10-day and just have a final say about it. See that low 156 just four days ago, and we... Hovered right back up to that resistance level of 175 with a closing of 179. So definitely keep it on watch. It's going to be on my watch list for Monday and next week. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to watch the price action because I, I'm, I'm a price action trader. I like to play on volume and momentum. I like to play the bottoms. And I'm learning how to play the 52-week breakouts. So AKTX is on our menu for tomorrow. Support level, like I said, 165 to 172 in that area. Can go to 170, 169 even. Okay, Vegas, right. the special bonus. Yes, I do have a bonus because I always like to try to find things to surprise you all. But you got to listen to the video. So um, today's bonus is DRYS. D-R-Y-S. And boy, oh boy, let me tell you. What a nice volume surge on Friday. Now, I don't know who traded that stock out there, but if you did, congratulations. That was a nice trade. And I still think we're going to have a continuation on this particular stock. Um, major, major volume surge. I mean, I actually haven't seen volume like that since December 14th. And back then, the stock ran as high as 615. Um, and uh, we close high of day on. Um, Friday was 618 so pretty much you know in line with what it traded back then but the volume my goodness that is so interesting especially because you know shippers um, haven't had you know such much as much hype as um, you know what other shippers uh, are out there so interesting Jim what are your thoughts on on what you're seeing there with the with the drives chart well, we definitely called Dry's bullish last year when they kind of slowed down on the splits and the and the offerings. So it, ever since then, it's been a very bullish stock, and it's always fell right back to my support level. And I called this 520 support level, five bucks here in the past. And let me pull up a three month, see how they kind of pulls back right to that around that 520 area, and then bounces up every time. So here in the three-month area, we've got a resistance right around the 622 area, 623, somewhere in there, that 624. If it pulls back any, it'll go under 5 bucks. 
maybe around 588. I think she's right about it being bullish and, and a low, low support right around 557. But in the room, I've been calling this for months. Anytime, anytime it gets below 520 or below that under five, it's a real strong buy. And I've yelled it so many times that I've lost my voice over it. I'm very bullish on this stock when it pulls back because it just seems like I hit it every time. So we're hitting a three-month resistance here at around 623. You see where I got that base of that candle right there, 622. A healthy pullback support is going to be around 589, and I'd like to see that to bounce back up and continue this run. But, you know, I'm not 100% bullish, but I'm bullish enough to say to call this perfect every time when it pulls back. And this is Dry's, and this is one stock that I've been watching for over 14 years. Oh my gosh, that's a long, that's a long time. Yep, so I've seen the, I've seen it up and down and all around. He's seen it. He's seen it. We've seen this thing bounce one time from five bucks all the way up to a hundred a oh couple my years gosh. ago. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, it was. Wow, wow. Okay. So that is the update on the stocks we're going to talk about. But I do want to mention to the Canadian viewers, um, because, you know, we know we don't have any free trading platforms. You know, we don't have Robinhood. We don't have even a cheap trading platform like Ustock Trade and some of these other ones that are out there. Which so, I love. I use it. Yes, and Jim loves it. And I've actually heard good things about it. And I'm thinking, damn, like, I wish we had something here. Like, why don't they get, like, I don't understand these companies. Like, so many American companies are in Canada. And yet, there's a market for this. And I don't know why they don't bring that here. I, just, I don't get it. But I have to say, there is good, there is hope. So I do want to mention Wealth Simple. So Wealth Simple uh, Financial is obviously an online investment management service. And really, they're focused on investing easier for millennials. And the company started back by Michael Katchen back in 2014. And um, they have over $1.9 billion of assets under management. Um, it's primarily owned by Power Corp with 77.4%. Uh, um, but anyhow, this company is uh, going to be introducing uh, a free platform. So I'm going to include in our video description the link for the Canadians out there that are listening to get yourself on the waiting list so that when this does come out live, you will be one of the first to know, or at least you'll be notified that um, the tool is available probably notify you when you could set up your account um, and you'll be able to trade for free. So that'll be a miracle uh, and something that we can't wait to have. So, I mean, just the fees alone can, if you do a lot of trading um, can damage you um, or be uh, expensive. So it's tough when people have smaller accounts, you know, these fees add up. And speaking of small accounts, I do want to mention Jim. Uh, we had, some phenomenal trades in the room the other day on options. And uh, we had a fabulous trade with AMD. And AMD, as you guys know, <laughs> we had an option call on that one. It was just for the day. And even though it expires next week, uh, but some people flipped it because we alerted that one at 72 cents. So for $72, you were able to buy one contract. And they flipped it at over 100%. Some of them flipped it when it hit 100%. So they made double their money. So it just goes to show you sometimes like a small account, you know, even someone with starting an options account with $100, you would have just bought one contract with your $100 and you would have doubled that basically the same day. And that is just amazing. So options has good opportunities. Again, it, it really is just about... Um, finding the right setup, have, making sure there's good volume in the option, making sure the chart, you're reading the chart right. And we were able to do that. By no means am I an options expert at all. 
but um, helping to learn how to read the charts helps make decisions sometimes on options. And we're just getting, you know, familiar with stuff. And we have a lot of uh, people in the room that are actually focused on options alone. And uh, they've been sharing some really great ideas. And uh, people have been making uh, some pretty good money. And I think the ones with smaller accounts are actually finding it um, life changing. So I think that's great. And I uh, would love to probably talk about options another time, but definitely not on today's video. This was, this um, was and what's that? This was another one when I mentioned that we were at the bottom of, you of the did. Dow. You did. You talked said, about AMD. Sixteen thirty-eight, and I said, "Watch this thing run back up to nineteen to twenty bucks." And then, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven days later, we're at that nineteen fifteen level. But I identified this. I was ready. I mean, I'm just watching stocks that I've watched. I knew, I just knew kind of in my heart that we, we kind of hit a good solid bottom there. And this pulls back. I mean, this is great for, for scalping and flipping and, and options. I mean, you can pull, call it pulling back and you can call it bouncing up. And I called this 1740 the last time we were in the room and it, look how it did that next day. It bounced right off that 1740. We did pull back, but yet the next day, bingo, that's a dollar fifty trade right there. Oh yeah, beautiful trade. Yep, that's one hundred fifty bucks trade. on a hundred shares. So it's really don't take a lot of money to 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 profit if you find you a good bottom on a or a good support level. Exactly, exactly, and I think that's a great, great. That's a great comment. Yeah. And uh, also, I just want to mention one last thing. So a lot of people have messaged um, either through the email at Vegas that I love stocks or I just get people that message me through Discord. Um, and people are saying, you know, how, I want to learn more about charts. I want to learn more about charts. Can you guys do more stuff about charts? So I'm working on with Jim and we are looking to uh, introduce um a chart educational program, which will be like once a week for three hours. Um, there will be a fee associated with it. Just working on finalizing some details with Jim. Uh, but that really is not going to start till February because we are currently working on the course content and what we're going to cover each uh, session. Most likely the sessions will be on Sundays. They will be recorded. They will be done live in a secured channel. And um, I will work out some details with Jim. And then once I have all the information, I will definitely share. But if you are interested to be part of that, uh, just email Vegas at I love uh, stocks.com. So that's I L U V stocks.com. And uh, that way I can add you to the waiting list. And then this way, when I have all the details, I will then email you. Uh, individually with the information and then it's up to you if you decide you want to register or not so it is really your choice but um, definitely uh, I think the demands there that uh, we have to do some classes and uh, this is not something you can just teach uh, through a just through the internet and and just teach um, during the day and you know Jim does a great job if those of you that come by the room at explaining details on charts all the time uh, so if you're not in the room for visiting the free trial, I think you should try it out. Um, again, it's not about you trying it and then joining. It's not about that. You have to join only if it's benefiting you and you're learning. If it's not, then there's no point. So I don't think it's any harm for you to come and check it out for free for two weeks. And then at that point after that, I think you will be able to make a better informed decision. So I don't think there's anything really to risk. Or invest except your own time so we welcome you to come by yes vegas, vegas and i are live on voice also <laughs> during that period so you get to the learning process even in the chat room that's why we're the I, feedback we get oh my gosh i just want to I, I you know i it's unbelievable i have you know people that message and one that really just brought me to tears the other day <clears throat> And uh, last night, and uh, someone that basically stated that um, that they felt that everything was so helpful. He said the the channel, the voice channel, was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And he mentioned, and I quote, what this person says. Um, and if you come into the room and you can read the comment for yourself, <clears throat> I'm not making any of this up. 
um, that he mentioned that, you know, he was losing money consistently. Uh, he had winners, but not constant winners. He said, now that's changed at a rapid rate. He said, not from anyone telling me to buy and sell, but showing me the things to look at on a stock before I jump in into a trade or before I exit a trade. And he mentioned, you know, special thanks to Vegas and Jim for the time they put into the voice channel. And he said, you know, I can't keep up with two trades at one time, let alone all these people bending my ear, helping me. Um, I just want to thank everyone from the bottom of his heart. And, you know, I read that yesterday and I was like, oh, my gosh. So touching. And, you know, I'm reading it and it touches me, you know, and, and you know, Jim and I are saying, you know, we love doing the videos and uh, helping people because really that's what I love the most is comments like that. I swear, inspire me to want to do more and inspire me to like want to keep helping and, and um, sharing with people. And so many people out there really just don't share. And I just don't understand. I don't get it. But anyways, um, that's for another time. <laughs> so I just want to say have a happy, happy, happy new year to everybody. And a great rest of your Sunday. And uh, we're blessed to have you guys here. And uh, we're so grateful to the phenomenal support you guys give us and to the comments. I mean, I just love reading them. And I will say, I really honestly respond to every single one. And so does Jim. So thank you so much for taking the time to, to even do that. We appreciate everybody very much. And that's it. Anything else to add, Jim, for today? Yeah, I just want to repeat to make sure you subscribe to the channel and also hit the, the, the bell so you can get our updates. And I also want to repeat the fact that look at some of them old plays you did. Look at where they're sitting at. See if they're way below support level. You can identify where support was when you were playing them before. You might find you some opportunities. Because I'm finding, I'm finding them everywhere. Square, JD. I mean, I'm pulling up JD chart right here. See how it pulled back there to that 1926 and we're at 23. I can just go on and on and on with these stocks, how, how much they've pulled back last couple last month in December of 2018. Nog, 188, now we're at 273. HUYA pulled back to 15, now we're at 17. I mean, they're just, they're everywhere. WTI, 347, now we're at 493. I can just go on and on and on how these things got oversold in December 2018. So this is the aftermarket report with Vegas and Jim, our first edition of 2019. And we appreciate everybody that watches our videos. And please subscribe and hit that like button. And have a great 2019. We're starting a bullish year. And I do believe we're going to hit year highs by the end of the year or sooner. This is the aftermarket awesome. report. I love Bye stocks. Bye, guys. See you tomorrow.